Hello and welcome back. All right, in this lesson, we're going to basically just do an exercise where we're going to make a selection and then we're going to change the colors of that selection. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a selection of our dress and we're going to change it to a different color. So which selection tools do you think we should use? Which ones do you think would work best along the edges? Well, there's a couple of them that would actually work. The magnetic lasso tool would work. The quick mask mode would work. You could probably use the magic wand tool as well. They're all probably going to work and you may have a preference of one of those selection tools over another. Let me share with you how I would make this selection and then I'll show you how to make a color change. So the tool that I would use would be the quick selection tool because I can make a quick selection of her dress and then use the quick mask mode to brush off areas that I don't want selected. So I'm going to go ahead and just make my selection real quick and then I'm going to use my alter option key to make a deselection of the areas that should not be selected. Looks like I got the bouquet too so I'm going to go ahead and deselect that as well. We also have some skin here I do not want selected because we don't want to change the color of her skin. So I think that's a pretty good start. Looks like we do have a little area here. So I'm going to make a smaller brush with my left bracket key and then I'll go ahead and add in this area here alright so I think that's a pretty good start and now would be a good time to switch over to our quick mask mode with the letter Q and now I can go in and use my brush to fine-tune my selection so with the letter B, I get a big brush. So I'm going to bring that down with the left bracket key. And then I'm going to paint with white to remove from the selection. It's still going to take some time to go around and fine tune the edges the way we need them in order to select just the dress. But I find this particular tool set of the quick selection and then the quick mask mode works best for me. You're just going to have to practice and experiment until you find a combination of tools that work for you. So I'm just going to go around the edge here. I'm not going to get it perfect. We don't want to spend all day here watching me do this. So it would be better for you to practice what you're learning and work on making it the best that you can. I have a big chunk right here that wasn't selected so I'm going to paint with black now to add that part back in. I also have the flow of my brush set to 70%. I think I'm going to bring that up to 100% so it fills in that area a lot faster. Otherwise, it's just going to build it up. Looks like we have a couple fingers here, so let's go ahead and add those in. We don't want to change the colors of our fingers or the fingertips either. Now it's just a matter of getting in between the fingers and getting these little pieces right here deselected. So I'm going to paint with white again. Alright, let's just go around the dress real quick and do some minor adjustments. The other thing is, because we are getting in here really tight along the edges, you could still go back into the select and mask option once you get out of the quick mask mode to further refine the edges that were selected. And the reason why you might want to do that is because maybe you want to feather it a little bit more so it doesn't have as much of a hard edge as it does now. Overall, I don't think it's too bad, so it shouldn't be too big of a problem. Okay, with my right bracket key, I'm going to make a large brush to cover a huge area here. All 
I'm not going to go inside the edges really tight and, and make it perfect. I'm just going to quickly select the outer edges of the bouquet here and then we'll go ahead and change the color of the dress. So when you're ready to practice with this file, you might want to spend a little more time practicing getting closer to the edge and feathering the edges with some of the other tools we've worked on in this section. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and zoom out. All right, so that's looking pretty good. With the letter Q, we get out of the quick mask mode. Let's zoom in and see how we did. And it looks like we did pretty good. And again, there's probably some areas here that I would work on a little bit to feather it a little bit more. But I think that will work just for now, just for demonstration purposes. All right, now we're going to go ahead and add a non-destructive adjustment layer. So we're going to go up to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and we're going to select Hue Saturation. So just like we did with our sunset in a previous lesson, we can now change the color with our Hue Slider. So if you want to give her a purple dress or a brown dress, you can make those adjustments here, maybe green. We can also increase or decrease the saturation of the colors as well. And then, of course, because we are working non-destructively, we can always come back and make adjustments to this because maybe our client doesn't like the shade of green that we selected. You can also select individual color channels if you want to focus just on specific colors within that selection. But I think Master will work just fine for now. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Looks like we have a little bit of an area here that maybe wasn't selected because we have different colors in here versus the dress. So let's go back to the history panel and see what it looked like prior to adding that. Okay, it does look like we did have that selected. It could just be the fact that the hue and saturation colors are not being picked up in here and it's actually changing the colors to something different versus green. Now that's another reason why we use an adjustment layer because now we can go in and remove that edit inside that area. So let's go ahead and do that. Make sure you have your layer mask selected. Select your brush with the letter B and then paint with black. Black removes, white adds, and as you can see that purple is now being removed and the color of the skin is starting to shine through now. Now there is some green in here so you want to keep some of that green in there. We're just trying to remove the purple because the see-through fabric is adding a different color when we make our adjustments to the hue and saturation. So that's looking pretty good. So go ahead, grab this image, apply a selection, use your favorite tools. For extra credit, you can use all of the selection tools to practice with. And then go ahead and create a new non-destructive hue saturation adjustment layer and change the colors. All right, so that's it for this particular lesson. I'm going to share with you one more way to make a selection in the next lesson.